when we talk pruning in the garden, I think in general, people get a little intimidated, but certainly with fruit trees, even more so because it feels so irreversible, some of these pruning mistakes you might make. Absolutely. So first of all, if you're a person who doesn't want to spray your trees, you don't want to use toxic sprays, and lots of us don't, one of the best ways that you can keep your fruit tree healthy and productive without using sprays is actually by pruning your tree correctly. So I know for me, when I started growing fruit trees, I knew there was this thing called fruit tree pruning. I knew it was different from pruning native and ornamental trees, but I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what the point was. And it is indeed very different. When you are pruning a fruit tree, you are actually removing healthy branches. So when I teach arborists fruit tree pruning, I, I remember I was in uh, Virginia doing a, a demo and this was before I actually did my talk explaining why you do what you do when you're pruning a fruit tree. So I go to make a cut to cut off an entire branch off, off this young tree. One arborist jumped and tried to physically stop me from pruning off this branch. Why are you pruning this branch? It's a healthy branch. So when you are pruning native and ornamental trees, you're usually focusing on dead, diseased and damaged branches. If you remove a healthy branch, it's maybe because it's crisscrossing and rubbing up against another branch. So with fruit tree pruning, our goals are different. We want to ensure that there is really good air circulation inside the canopy. And why is that beneficial? Because diseases like disease spores, they love dark, damp, moist conditions. So if you've got one of those hairy trees, like a hairy apple tree with a million branches, and then once it leaves out, when the water, when rain gets into the canopy, it never dries out. And so that is the ideal condition for rust and other diseases that are really common with apple trees. So we're trying to create a structure for our tree where there's lots of great air circulation. We're also trying to create a situation where each and every branch has equal access to sunshine. So the reason there is we want the fruit to ripen properly and to be beautiful and delicious. And so by making sure every branch has access to sunshine, well then, Every, all the fruits will actually ripen correctly and properly. The other thing is energy. So let's say, Kevin, you wake up in the morning and you've got lots of plans. You want to run a marathon. You want I to wish. move to a different you know, property to move all your stuff. You want to cook three meals and for the freezer. You know, you just there's so much you want to do and you're going to do it all in one day. My bet is out of all those projects, you're not going to do very well with any of them because you just don't have the physical energy. With fruit trees, it's very similar. We need to tell our fruit tree where to put the energy because if it's going to put all its energy into growing a million branches and growing fruit, well then... The fruit might be okay, or it might be kind of hard and small because the, the tree just doesn't have enough energy to put in, into sort of building quality fruit on those branches. By removing some of the branches, you're telling the tree, hey tree, in the remaining branches, you can use the, the, the energy that you have in your root system. You can divide it up to fewer branches and fewer pieces of fruit so that each fruit will be more tasty and sweet and delicious and get more of the nutrition. It's It makes complete sense. I think I was really kind of scared to prune. And now I'm three years in maybe on most of my trees. And I've seen the results of my confronting those fears, I suppose. And it's been great. And so, you know, don't be don't be afraid as long as you're using the right the right principles, of course, would would you recommend a particular time of year to be pruning trees? Does it depend on the tree itself? Absolutely. So it, it actually depends on what goals you want to achieve. Okay, so here with us, there is a big difference between what happens everywhere you've got a dormant season. Okay, but for us, it's a really cold dormant season. So with a tree like an apple tree or a cherry tree or whatever, they are dormant in the winter. And at that time, they're not really actively growing very much. There's not going to be leaves on the branches. And they're going to store energy in their root system. 
So all that energy is in the root system. Think of it as a big pantry with lots of yummy, sweet stuff in there. In the spring, all that energy will come up into the branches of the tree and it'll pop open buds and and the leaves will form and fruit will form. Now, if in the spring your tree has 100 branches, then that limited amount of energy goes out to 100 branches. But if before the spring comes, you remove, let's say, 25% of the branches, there's only 75 branches left each branch will get a bigger share of the energy from the root system. So it will grow longer, the branches will be stronger, and they'll have more energy to put into your fruit on the tree. So saying that, if you want a small tree, like a small apple tree to grow faster, you want to prune in the late winter, early spring. That's what you want to do. You want to tell the tree, hey, take this finite amount of energy and put it into fewer branches. But if you have a big old tree, big old apple tree, big old cherry tree, plum, whatever it is, and it is already way too big, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, every time I prune this tree, it gets even bigger and I can't harvest half of this stuff and I have to, how do I spray it? If I'm going to use a holistic spray, what do I do? So you want to slow down growth. You use the same principle. What you do is, again, in the dormant season, again, all that nutrient, the nutrition is in the root system. Let that nutrition come up into the hundred branches. Let each branch grow a little bit. Let all the buds open, even let baby fruit form. Why not? Let your tree run a marathon. And then when it's tired, cut off some of the branches strategically in the correct way. And it won't, it will still, you're, you're basically throwing away some of the energy, right? But it's telling the tree, yeah, you don't have to compensate by growing even more now. It's thrown away that energy. It's been like a kid who just ate a chocolate bar and ran around in circles. It just has no energy left to grow more and be taller. So if you want to slow down growth, you will prune in maybe after blossom time. Depends what the tree is, what kind of tree it is. But you probably don't want to prune um, later than midsummer. After that, it's not really advisable for various reasons, especially people in cold climates, because pruning does always spur some sort, some growth, and you don't want baby shoots to be on your tree in the winter when they could freeze and die. Yeah. Yeah, it makes, it makes, it makes complete sense. Would you say, general rule of thumb, I guess, are, are there different methods that apply to different categories of, of fruit trees? I, I know the answer, but I'm sort of saying that. <laughs> well, it depends, right? So here's the thing. When I studied, uh, when I first started to try and figure out the fruit tree pruning, and it took me three years to just figure it out, I, I paid for people to come in from our fruit growing region to teach me and the other volunteers in the group. And every year I'm like, oh my God, what is this all about? Like what? I don't get it until finally I did get it. And then I could teach it because I got it. And it's like, oh, I figured it out. It's five steps. It's okay. But um, so at first I was taught one technique, which is called the central leader technique. And the orchardist that ta taught me, he said, you can use this for everything. You can use it for apple trees, for pear trees, for cherry trees, apricot trees, anything. It's a strategy that teaches you to have to make your tree look almost like a Christmas tree with one central leader. So with the tallest, you know, straight up and down branch, and then the canopy, the branches go out from there in a sort of tent or, you know, triangle shape. So you can do anything that way. However, some trees seem to want to be in a more vase shape. And I've found that myself. So our cherry trees like to be in an open canopy or vase shape, some of them, some and, and some of the plums do too. So some people, instead of having that straight up and down branch, they make their tree look a little like a cup so that the center of the, the tree is open. Either way, the goal is the same. You want good air circulation. You want to make sure that the wind can clean out the canopy, that the sun gets to every single branch. So I always start off by teaching central leader, because even if you're looking at an old tree that's been neglected, you know, for 10, 20 years, as long as you understand the concept, you can create an open air circulation situation in any tree. 
Watch the full episode right here and subscribe for more new episodes every single week.